The Su-25, NATO codename Frogfoot, or how the Russians call it, Grouch, is a subsonic jet aircraft developed in the Soviet Union by Sukhoi. It was designed as a strike aircraft to provide close air support for Soviet ground forces and it's still in use today by Russia and Ukraine as well as some other armies in the world. But why was the Su-25 even created? Well, this had to do with some quite embarrassing mistakes of the Soviet Air Force which created the need for such an aircraft. Hello and welcome to the Bobby and Tank's YouTube channel and enjoy this video. After the Soviets got their hands on nuclear weapons, they set their main priority on having a fleet of fast flying aircraft and they didn't see the need for ground attack aircraft anymore. But after the Soviets conducted the largest military exercise they had ever done, they were quite embarrassed to see that there were no qualified ground attack aircraft in their air force, which would be necessary in a conventional war without nuclear weapons. There were no real aircraft specifically designed to attack targets on the ground, which meant at that time the job had to be done by Su-7, Su-17, MiG-21 and MiG-23 fighter jets. The exercise the Dnepr in 1967 was the biggest military exercise the Soviets had ever performed with about 160,000 Soviet troops, 130 aircraft, several Soviet SAM batteries, 64 Soviet warships and 6 Chinese warships, plus their crews and support teams. This large-scale exercise obviously gained a lot of international attention but at the same time showed that it were fighter jets which carried out close air support strikes. And there were a few problems with that. These aircraft lacked armor plating for the pilot as well as some important equipment for ground fire and missile hits. Another problem was that their high flight speed made it difficult for the pilot to maintain visual contact with the targets on the ground. That meant the Soviets had to fill a gap. The last Soviet attack aircraft, the Ilyushin 10, was already obsolete and therefore not fit for the job. So eventually in early 1969, the Soviet Ministry of Defense decided to develop a specialized armored assault aircraft in order to provide close air support for ground forces. Engineers at Sukhoi figured that it was important for the new ground attack aircraft to be subsonic unlike the other jets of that era. In the Dnieper exercise, it were MiG-17s which performed the close air support role and they were far better than the supersonic jets because they were slower which meant the pilots had time to aim properly. These engineers thought this concept would work very well and put together a proposal with the help of young students. Suhoi was interested in this new concept and presented the idea to the commander of the Soviet Air Force and his higher-ups. This concept interested them, so eventually in March 1969 the Soviet Air Force announced a competition for design bureaus to design such a strike aircraft. Suhoi, Yakovlev, Ilyushin and Mikoyan were participants in this competition. Since Suhoi was the bureau which proposed the whole concept, they already had the design and therefore moved to the next step of testing it and eventually built a full-size mock-up. Interestingly, Suhoi attended the meeting where the design of the future ground attack aircraft was supposed to be presented and instead of paperwork, they brought their own full-size mock-up. On 22nd February 1975, the Su-25, which was called T-8 at the time, made its first flight and then many more to follow. These flights showed that the Su-25 was superior to its competitor, the Ilyushin 102. The funny thing about that is that the test pilot of the Su-25 prototype was Vladimir Ilyushin, who was the son of Sergei, who founded the Ilyushin Bureau. Who would have expected this betrayal? Well, in the end it's still Zarodina, so it doesn't really matter, does it? After negotiations and completion of all stages of the state trials, the Soviet Ministry of Aircraft Production authorized manufacture of the Su-25, which allowed serious production to start in 1978. And that was why and how the Su-25 was created. Anyways, that was all I had to say for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you think I said anything that is not right or you think I should have added any additional information to this video, please let me know in the comments and share your knowledge. Besides that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.